In today's Electronics and More video, I'll be showing you how to make an extremely loud, very simple, and well-made tripwire alarm. Tripwire alarms can be used to alert you if an individual is trespassing on your property or if you enjoy airsoft. Other channels on YouTube show tripwire alarms using matches, firecrackers, and simple motor noisemakers held together with hot glue, but the one I'm about to show you is designed to be long-lasting, very easy to use, easily resettable, and resistant to rain. First, let me show you what you'll need for this project. Okay, you're going to need a 9-volt battery, a 9-volt battery snap, some clear silicone, some heat shrink tubing, 8th inch ID and 332nd ID is ideal, some crazy glue, one clothespin, a very loud 105 decibel, piezo or piezo, depending on how you pronounce it, alarm. This one you see here was purchased at Radio Shack for around $6.50, and it's designed to operate for voltages between 6 and 14. I'm also going to be placing a link in the video description area if you'd like to purchase one that has slightly less decibels. I think it's around 95 decibels. And that one only sells for around $2. And you can also get the battery snap and the heat shrink tubing from the same place. You're going to need two red ring connectors, the small ones right here. Two half inch round head bolts made out of brass. That's 632 is the size. A flat head sheet metal screw. It could be stainless or brass. This is number eight by three quarter inch. A small piece of plastic. As you can see here, it's very, very thin. It only has to be about three quarters of an inch long by about a half of an inch wide. You're going to make a small hole in it. Any piece of plastic will work. Now for the trip wire, some people like to use a white string. Me personally, I like to use a very heavy thread made out of nylon designed for upholstery. The advantage is it's very strong and it's very hard to see. If you want to get done quicker, then have some five minute epoxy. Over here I made this little piece. It's five eighths of an inch wide and I made it from a half inch threaded coupling, PVC. It doesn't have to be threaded, I just had that laying around and that's why I used it. The purpose of that is to make the unit more rain resistant, which you'll see later in this video. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to drill a hole right in the center of the clothespin in between this part here and here, right in the middle, in that thicker section. Make a little mark. All right, you're going to go straight down, and you're going to use a drill bit that's the same diameter or slightly larger than the diameter of the 632 bolt. Once you drill the hole, you're going to separate the clothespin so we could drill another hole. Once it's separated, you're going to make another hole right in the center, in the thick part right here, right behind where the spring over here went into. So you can drill a hole right there, and you're going to make it slightly smaller than the diameter of the sheet metal screw. Once the hole's been drilled, you're going to go on the inside. This is the part that was down like that. And you're going to have to countersink that hole so this flathead goes nice and flush with the surface. You can use a 3 8 drill bit, a countersink bit, half inch bit. Just use this and spin it around a little bit. Once you get it to the right area where it's going to go flush, you're going to apply crazy glue inside this hole and on the threads and screw it in tight from the inside going out. And this is what it looks like with the screw in place with the crazy glue. It's flush on the bottom. Next thing we're going to do is take the small brass screws, insert them through the holes on the inside of the clothespin, push them all the way down till they're flush, and you're also going to put some crazy glue underneath the head of the bolt. Okay, both of the brass 632 bolts are installed in each side of the clothespin. When you install it, make sure the line or the slot is running in line with the clothespin. It's easier when you go to pull out the plastic tab. Don't make it this way, it may dig in. The next step, we're going to put the clothespin back together and insert a file between the contacts 
and move it back and forth to ensure both contacts meet flush. This is what it looks like when it's put back together. The next step, take this file, place it between these contacts, and file it down for a while until both of the contacts meet together with a wider surface area. And right here you can see how nice the contacts come together once it's been filed. That's exactly what you want. You can see inside it's flat. Okay, let's go on to the next step. Okay, what you want to do now is you want to ensure that the siren or the alarm is sealed so water cannot enter it. I took off the cover as you see in the image right over here. And once I did that I applied a bead of silicone all the way around the perimeter and around the holes and put the cover back on. The next thing I want to do, I'm going to crazy glue this right here in position, right over like that, center it, and the reason for this, when it rains, what's going to happen, the rain can't go in there because it will be raining down, and usually this is going to be screwed into a tree, and as a result you're going to have a lot less water hitting this but you definitely want to add this and you want to leave the bottom open so if any water finds its way in at an angle it'll run out right through the bottom so let me glue this in position and come right back right here is what it looks like once it's glued in position you can see it offers protection now by sticking out the rain cannot enter at an angle unless it's being driven by wind and you have that opening to let the water out okay the next thing we're going to do is take the ring connectors you can hold them down with needle nose and you can take a utility knife and cut it like this. I want to remove each one of these because we're not going to be using those. They take up too much space. We're going to be applying heat shrink tubing. That open end will slide over the wire that's going to be stripped. You'll be seeing that in a minute. The next step you're going to take the alarm, position it where it's supposed to go which is over here. And we're not going to glue it yet because this wire needs to be made shorter it's going to go right around that nut using the ring connector and I'm going to solder it onto this wire put heat shrink tubing over it secure it and then apply the glue and push it right against the nut okay this is what it looks like when it's glued in position when the wire is properly trimmed and the ring connector is connected to the bolt you can see the glue on the back the next thing we're going to do is glue the 9 volt battery right onto the wood. Make sure you do it as shown. You don't want the terminals up because if it rains you'll have water puddling around the terminals. So do it upside down. Once that's glued I'll come right back. Okay the battery is now installed. You're going to take the battery snap, the 9 volt snap. You're going to trim the wires accordingly. You're going to make sure the black wire connects to the black wire and then the red wire is going to go to the other side using another ring connector. Okay, this is what it looks like when it's all complete. See how nice and compact everything is? All the connections are at the bottom. See the heat shrink there on the negative for the battery. And the ring connectors with the heat shrink. There's silicone between the brass bolt and the heat shrink. When you screw this into the tree, make sure that this side is always up. If it's not going to be raining, and you're only going to be using it temporarily it does not make a difference if it's this way or that way in here you can see the tag the little piece of plastic that keeps it from triggering now I'm going to undo this I'm going to pull this out and you're going to want to lower your volume because this thing is insanely loud and after this I'm going to show you exactly how it works with a demonstration here we go That is loud. You're not going to get much better than that. Okay, let me give you a quick demo.